Hello everybody and this video is going to be, I don't know, I just jumped straight into that. I'm like, hello, and we're just going to jump straight into this. But this video is going to be topic four, lesson one, example five from the Envisions Algebra 2 math book. You would think I would have been able to get that intro since I've done this intro like 150 times, but I think because I've been going over each example, my brain just malfunctioned there for a second. I'm sure you all have had that before. And if you have not, then give me the secrets to how to keep my brain functioning correctly. All right, so that aside, let's jump into this example. Um, so we're looking at rational functions. We're looking at inverse variability. We're looking at um, reciprocal functions, things like that. So in this one, we're going to take that reciprocal function that we saw in example five, and we're going to tr do a translation to it. We're gonna move it in the x, y direction. So it says graph g of x equals one over x minus three. So our constant here is one. Um, our constants can change, but the shape of the graph will most likely stay the same. What are the equations of the asymptotes? What are the domain and range? So let me just grab this example and move it straight over to my smart notebook. I think that my relaxing from the first example to this one has become great. <sighs> I had more of my radio voice for the first one, but I think with all the talking, it's starting to fade away. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the parent function graph. And we did this in Desmos in the last video. So let me just grab this guy because, again, you don't really want to see my chicken scratch I'm trying to do it on the, um, on the uh, Wacom tablet. And this is not sponsored by Wacom. I know I keep talking about my Wacom tablet. I love it, though. I don't think I'd become famous enough for them to sponsor me, but that'd be pretty cool. I feel like a YouTuber, like and subscribe to my videos. All right, sorry, off topic. So we're gonna start with a parent function graph. In this case, my parent function graph is f of x equals one over x. All right, we have a horizontal translation and we have a vertical translation. I know this because here's my parent function, but what if I changed my parent function to f of x minus three? Anything in those parentheses will give me a horizontal translation. If I were to change x into x minus 3, that means I'm looking at x minus 3 here. And from previous examples, if you remember, this is a horizontal translation. And it lies to us. It says negative 3, so we're actually going to translate it over 3 to the right. And I, to the right. Okay. So I know that I'm moving this whole graph. I'm going to pick it up and move it over three units to the right. Then the second thing I have is I also have this f of x plus 2. This 2 is happening to my original function. Here's my original function. The 2 is happening outside of it, independent of x but dependent on y. Or in other words, we see f of x plus two. And this plus two is vertical. This is my vertical translation. And verticals are straight up, so this guy is going to tell me the truth. So up two units. So this is what this really means is that if I take, let's take a point at random. Um, I'm going to take this point right here. What's going to happen is I'm going to move this right three, one, two, three, and I'm going to move it up to one. Uh -huh. Not the best point to choose because I don't have the three over here, but one, two, three. So now this point is kind of going to be up there. That's the same here. This one's going to move over three, one, two, three, and up two. All right, so we get this shape kind of moved over. What's really good about the horizontal and the vertical asymptote is those are a very good point for us to move. 
So if I had my vertical asymptote, let's see, I'm going to make my vertical asymptote um, blue because my vertical asymptote is going to be affected by the horizontal translation. And so what I'm going to take, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vertical asymptote and I'm going to move it over three. One, two, three. So now my vertical asymptote has moved over three. My horizontal asymptote depends on the vertical translation. So here's my horizontal. It's actually going to move up to one, two. And now we have a new section, this section and this section to draw a new graph. All right, so recall that adding h to x is the definition of f translates the graph, f horizontally. Adding k to f of x translates, so what they're saying here is you have f of x minus h plus k. This h is your horizontal. This k is your vertical. So the graph of 1 over x minus 3 plus 2 is a translation of the graph of the parent function, 3 units right and 2 units up. So the line x equals 3 is a vertical asymptote. So here's my line right here. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do this in blue. x equals 3 is my vertical. And remember, we moved it over 3. And then y equals 2. I don't know why that took me a second to think, because we moved it up as my horizontal. And so y equals 2 is your horizontal asymptote. So that's my horizontals, my verticals. The way I would say this is the line. Let me type this up. Let me see, because that's a little bit better than my chicken scratch. The line x, uh, x equals 3, E-R-T-I-C-L-A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. The line y equals 2 is the horizontal, is a... A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. The domain. Remember they asked for the domain and the range? I don't know why I put R in capital A's. So the domain and the range, I'm going to write in set notation. So that's the curly brackets X, the curly brackets Y bar bar. So looking at this now, what value if I, if I substitute it in here, what value can it not be? What is basically like this point where they intersect? Because again, it was zero in the last one. Why are we intersecting here? Well, we're intersecting at x equals three. So x cannot equal three. And then where my, again, the horizontal part of the intersection is y cannot equal two. All right. So there you go, there's your domain. Again, we're not ever going to cross the 2, nor are we ever going to cross the um, 3. All right, so let's go check out. Um, the solution will say the same. Keeps going, talks about the shifts. Oh, this is nice. It does have an animation. It's better than my animation. But there it's moving over 3 and up 2. And there's where it cannot equal, because again, it's not going to cross this blue or green line. Hi, right, so you want to graph g of x equals 1 over x plus 2 minus 4. What are the equations of the asymptote? So again, x equals, y equals for the vertical and horizontal. And then drag the points on the graph to change the shape. Drag the gray point to change the location of the asymptote. All right, so there you guys go. Um, make sure that you look up the concept summary, understand that, and um, we'll catch you in the next lesson, lesson two. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we will see you next time.